All right, so we're going to do uh, podcast number six, but it's a, a almost like a mini-sode, ideally. We could get long-winded. And if you're listening to this on Spotify or um, just the audio form, I would encourage you to go to the video on likely YouTube, unless we start doing video onto Spotify, because the goal for this one is to cut away to B-roll of the trucks that we're discussing, because the goal for the day is um, a comparison of Bridgeports versus New Way. And this isn't, versus is the wrong word, because what we've determined after putting uh, 4,000 hours on a new Bridgeport Ranger arm and 2,500 hours onto a new new way sidewinder is their strength and weaknesses between the two and uh, as far as like user friendliness or mechanic. And neither one of us describes this as mechanics, but we recognize there's probably some things that are simpler compared to one or the other. And um, so, yeah, these are t- uh, 2022s. So... Yep, and we got them both within, I think, two months. We got the Bridgeport first, the New Way second. Um, Bridgeport has a couple more routes it does every week, so that's why it has more hours. But I would say between um, the two trucks, we've put plenty of hours on them to kind of understand them. And we've worked worked through a few problems on both of them, so we've gotten to see kind of the maintenance side of them, um, how, you know, you go about getting them fixed, where you get them fixed, sourcing parts. So that being said, though, I will say neither of those trucks have caused us much issue. I was writing it down like a cylinder in each truck, I think, a couple hoses. Yep. Then after that, maybe some sensors or buttons. So they have both right. been pretty reliable for us. Yep. Um, and, oh, and both of these, I should add, are the 12-foot arm. 12-foot arm. is. Do they both have options between 8 and 12-foot? I'm not sure if the new way does or not, but I know the Bridgeport does. Okay, so you can either do 8 foot or 12 foot. You can do 8 or 12 foot. Yeah, because we've heard criticisms like, oh, why would you do a 12 foot? Because, you know, it's so much longer time for it to go out. Um, But uh, we were breaking into a territory. Like, you, ACE has been established in your Columbus area for years, decades, but converting them to side load, having 12 foot option has been a. 12 foot saves you from getting out definitely critical critical difference and so. another thing i would add about um the two packers uh i'm of the opinion whatever packer you run you're more acclimated to yeah so you're just naturally going to have a bias towards and yeah. i would say each of us have a bias towards one or the other yeah. of these two packers yeah and it's probably the one that we drive yeah i because you primarily drive bridgeport yep and i primarily drive the new way and you've had complaints about like when you pull back too fast, like trash falls out. And I'm like, dude, I, I don't know how you're doing that. Cause yep. like, I have no issue with that whatsoever. And cause I have a monitor, I can see what trash is in there. And I u- usually have a sense of like when the cart's empty. And then when you get in the bridge port, you're trying to grab something around a mailbox. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We definitely ha- like, I know it, I, it'd been a few weeks or months before I'd gotten into the bridge port and then I got into it and it took a good half hour before I got back into a flow. Yep. Where, um, just the the speed response and the joystick. And some of this um, is just user being adapt- adaptation and not necessarily like the strength or weaknesses of one to the other. Yep. But we'll get into the strength and weaknesses between the two or comparison. Uh, you scribbled out some notes uh, to get us started. Well, I, I think the biggest thing between the two of them is the joystick. Yeah, okay. And that's what I figured we'd start with. Okay, let's go with the joystick. So you got your first notes written. Bridgeport, joystick, what's your observations? Okay, so the Bridgeport is electric over hydraulic, and when you do an input, it's an on or off input. Yep. So that means there's no sensitivity to the joystick. If I go up, it's full speed up. If I go down, it's full speed down. Yeah. And that's every motion with the Bridgeport, which um, when you're learning – it's quite a bit. Yeah. Because when you're learning, you're only doing one motion at a time. Yep. And so you have all the hydraulic pressure for, like, closing the grips. Yep. Going towards the can, grabbing the can, going yep. up. So, I mean, that's, like, my main thing about the bridge port is it's an on or off electric over hydraulic joystick. Yeah. If you are watching, and later on, we'll kind of go into, like, the simplicity of the design probably being more mechanic-friendly. But the paradox is you would think, oh, this is the most easily or simply designed arm. 
but it's also like least friendly for users to learn how to do side load. Like if you're not active, like we've seen guys never do side load, jump into this truck and try to use it. And if they're hesitating or they're like, like, oh, I need to go out with the arm and then they get scared of the speed. So they back off mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh, I went not close enough. So they go out again, not close enough. And then all of a sudden you're, you're getting these jumpy motions in the arm and it's loud because that speed and simplicity, since there's no, like there's no inner or variable control in the flow. It's like all on and stop, all on, stop, all on, stop. And you're talking about simplicity. So back to the yeah. simplicity of it. The Bridgeport is kind of a simple packer in the sense of you've got your yeah. PTO, it's electric yeah. over hydraulic. Now, next to that, we would have the New Way Sidewinder, which is completely different. That actually has an operating system in it. It's got a computer. Yeah. It's controlling the flow of the arm, yep. how fast the arm's going out. Yeah. It's sensitive. And I mean, you could talk more to yeah. that. Yeah, and that's, and that's what, um, like when I first got into New Way, I noticed the arm was a little bit slower, but... I also had way more control within the joystick because of that variable control. Like the note I scribbled on, like onto the notes you typed out was if you grew up playing video games with like flight simulators and you had joysticks where it's like full throttle, less throttle, you will love the new way. And it's way more user friendly for someone who had never done side load to get in this truck and learn because that hesitation in the joystick doesn't translate into whole truck sh shaking. Because when you hesitate with the bridge port, the whole truck is rocking. Yep. Now, granted, it's the smaller Kenworth. Like, it's a 19-yard body on a Kenworth versus a 31-yard on the auto car. So when you got that big body or big arm shaking on the Kenworth, that truck does rock hard. But, but, yeah. but like, the, the bridge port, to, like, slow the bridge port down, we tap. Yeah, and that tapping is what, yeah. So, so you kind of, like... On, 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 yeah. you know, up so up like you can up slow up it up down up. and you can make the arm go slower. But again, for somebody new learning, that is not intuitive at all. It's not intuitive and it's stressful and it generates more noise because we've had noise complaints about the bridge port. And I think a lot of it's because, yep. well, not just because of that on off function, but just the structure. Well, I, the, 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 the computer that controls the new way to me, it, it just has like this engagement where. It, it softly and and subtly yeah. like engages the whole arm, if that yeah. makes sense. Like taking yeah. the can up, pulling the can down. Whereas, yeah, the bridge port is just this raw like, bam, Boom. bam, grabbing Boom. it. Yeah, and it's fast. Like a lot of guys, like if you're an experienced operator, you might appreciate the speed. And we saw that yesterday, where you and I were working in both streets. Like it was the last few stops, so we kind of leapfrogged each other. And there was one moment where. We rolled up to a can at the exact same time, and I looked in my rearview mirror. I'm like, well, let's see what happens when we both go arm out, and yours was, like, way faster. Yep, like, and that's what I like about my bridge. Yeah. Board. And yeah. the thing is, is once you become an experienced operator, you're no longer doing singular motions. Right. You start combining your motions, which means you're sharing oil, and it, it, it yeah. kind of slows the arm down in the right. sense of you're doing multiple motions at once. And yeah. yeah, when you get up to speed, I mean, the bridge port, you can get flying with it. Yeah, and I wonder how much of it is actually being slowed down because you have multiple actions going on, so the oil is being used at different cylinders at the same time, or you're just, like, so in tuned with it that it's perceived to be slower. Because um, once you've done something 10,000 times, like, it looks slower. Like, because you're, do like, you're doing it so intuitively. Yeah. So I, like, I don't know what the math is. And if I was real thorough, like we'd cut away now to where we actually go out and try to like shoot. I don't know if we'll get that thorough. There will be moments where we'll have to cut away to where we're actually in a camera walking around the truck measuring or, you know, doing yep. stuff. But on the noise too, like we set up our routes with the bridge port and then you came back over and took those routes over with the new way. Yeah. And we had people that were, they said, like, we can hear the garbage truck at 5.30 in the morning yeah. with the, new, with the yeah. um, yep. bridge port. When the new way took over, those people know. They were like, I love your new truck. Yep. I don't know what happened, yep. but the new truck is quiet. Yep. Yeah. And something I would tell to a manufacturer like Bridgeport is when you, when you put a noisy packer on a diesel truck, the diesel truck kind of drowns it out. 
Yeah. But we were down touring auto car in the fall, and right. it's very evident that electric garbage trucks are on their way, yep. electric chassis. Yep. So when you put a noisy packer on a quiet electric garbage truck, I think you're going to get a lot more feedback yeah. as to the noise of the packer. That's going to be huge. So, I, I mean, think, something yeah. to consider, because the new way on an electric garbage truck would be a very quiet right. ride. If we ever get, uh, whether it's purchased or demoed if we ever get a new way sidewinder on an auto car here in columbus to demo like we're gonna have probably 10 hours of video on an electric one you're saying just to shoot yeah Yeah. because we're gonna like it's gonna be i don't care if a nine hour route turns into a 12 hour route it's we're gonna put cameras all over this truck because like i just anticipate that difference to be that i think you could i think you could bid cities with low decibel garbage trucks yeah like i think that'd be a serious consideration yeah like if you're bidding a city you're like well we'll come in but we're gonna come in with quiet garbage trucks and you might be able to start a route at like four in the morning yep and people won't know like all you'll hear is like if you get kitty litter or gravel like some people throw like granular stuff away and it'll get in the track of the packer and you'll get that loud squeal as a packer retracts uh, that might be the noise issue, but otherwise, all you're going to really hear is possibly brakes and trash falling out of the cart. Yeah, you know, and that's going to be wild. That that will blow my mind. Well, it's going to be interesting what they do too, as far as like mm-hmm. pedestrians and stuff, because you do need to make a certain amount of noise just to be like safe. Yeah, true. I'm sure it's all being considered. Yeah, you'll probably have some sort of audible speaker. They did that with electric cars at the beginning, where they'd put like bird chirping sounds on them or something. Um, that was the one example, but or you can mimic a vehicle noise. But yeah, like that'll be a nice problem to have. So another big consideration when we were ordering our first side loader was we have alley stops, which means we have tight quarters with um, with garages. Mm-hmm. And when we were ordering them, we I kind of found out that Bridgeport had the the least amount of kickout. Or it had a yeah. smaller amount of kickout, meaning right. when you lift the cart up, how far away from the truck does it go? So right. would you hit a fence? Would you hit a building? Um, and the new way has a little bit bigger kickout. So when we got when we took uh, delivery of the new way, I was really nervous. Like, oh man, yeah, we got this bigger kickout. Is this going to work? Are we going to be able to get all our carts tipped? Yeah. And funny enough, the new way actually does better in the alleys because you can control that arm going up and the speed of the can. Yeah. So you can get very close with comfort to buildings and fences and objects. And that kind of goes to something I wrote under the joystick notes as well is just accuracy, emphasis on accuracy. So I find grabbing extras outside the cart, which I understand like when you're buying a side load, the people who design them are like, we don't care about trash outside the cart. We design these things to tip carts. But for us, grabbing uh, or converting routes to side load, we kind of needed that ability to grab personal cans or trash outside the cart. And the variable control and the joystick of the new way made that accuracy like very useful both in and out of the alleys. Because then when you got in the alley, the accuracy doesn't just apply to the trash outside the cart, but the accuracy of the arm close to gutters or garages or cars or you know everyone pack like people just block alleys with everything yeah no matter what you do even if you're in a contract town where you have all the rules stipulated you're going to come upon instances where you know you've you've got to kind of dial the arm in and avoid hitting something yeah and it's a lot easier to do when you have a joystick that you is pressure sensitive and you can control the speed of it going out as opposed to yeah now you would love to be able to go like like under the bridge port, I wrote full send all caps because like every time you use it, it's like full send. You know, once you commit, it's like we're going full send. Uh, so that's where the bridge port's nice, where it's just always on and you're getting a hundred percent. But when you need that diligence and accuracy, um, yeah, the new way definitely excels. Well, and if you commit with the bridge port and then you decide halfway up that you're not going to commit, <laughs> you are going to spill yeah. a cart of garbage yeah. everywhere, which when you're learning, you inevitably are going to do. Right. And even when the lids are closed, you might think, oh, you know, lids closed, there's no trash. Well, it'll out. Oh, yeah. If you if you are going up with the bridge port arm and you pause or hesitate, it'll shake it all out and it'll fall out like confetti. Whereas what I call the Jenga trap, um, if I roll up to a Jenga trap with a bridge port or a new way, my success rate is way higher with the new way because you can just kind of delicately grab it, bring it in, bring it in. And then I think I've made reels about this where I'm like, you got to go slow, go slow, and then commit full send. 
and then you use that, um, I don't want to call it centrifugal force, but the force of it going, like it's a G-force. The forward it, momentum. Yeah, as you rise up full, that that momentum can keep it t- together. Right. And then you tip it all. Yep. So that's where I kind of prefer the new way. Um, and and th- so th- that probably takes us into, you know, that's the joystick. The other big difference is how these arms are arms are designed yep. and where they're placed on the truck. Yep, that's a big difference. So the new way is a very symmetrical arm that is underneath the um, hopper, underneath the hopper and yep. the pack blade. So it goes out. It's symmetrical. I think that's part of why it's quiet too. Yeah, just just the design of it. Yeah. Whereas the bridge port, they put the arm at the front of the packer kind of up top on a rail and then it comes out to the side and it's offset. Yeah. Which again, each of those it's good and bad. Yeah. So the problem with the the problem with the Bridgeport design is it's more difficult for grabbing stuff if you're like going around a mailbox, around cars. Yeah. Just because you've got this like kick out or the offset. The offset that has nothing to do with your grips. Yeah, and that's – I'm going to definitely be having to cut away to B-roll to explain that because we can wave our hands as much as possible trying to explain it. It won't make sense. And when you're new and you're learning, all you're focused on is the grips and grabbing that yeah. can. And then this offset all of a sudden will just punch a mailbox or it will uh-huh, punch a, a building. Garage. <laughs> yeah. Like that's where – if you have that offset arm in the alleyway, that's where it's like – I didn't see that garage. Yeah. Even though like you're – it's three – feet from your door like somehow you you're so stress focused on where those fingers are trying to like accurately grab stuff in you know confined spaces like an alleyway you don't recognize like this solid mass of the frame in which the arms mounted is like about to punch a hole and remodel a garage uh whereas the new way since it's all lined up all you really got to focus on is just um the two fingers the fingers are the yeah. only thing that'll ever hit something. Yeah. There's really nothing else when you're going out and nope. grabbing. No, it's and that's where that in with that variable control plus that alignment to the hopper, that's great. But the trade off, again, it's not like one's better than the other. It's all trade offs. Like you might have more accuracy um in confined space with that new way, but the trade off is that offset arm gives the hopper more depth. Correct, yeah. So the new way puts the arm underneath the hopper. So we've got this big, shallow hopper. Yeah. Whereas the uh, the Ranger, the bridge port, it's offset. So we've got this deeper hopper, which yep. if you if you look on the manufacturers, the the new way is a six yard capacity. Yep. The bridge port is a four yard capacity. Right. The bridge port will outpack the new way yeah. hands down any day. And that's the thing is like I can run anything through that packer. I can yeah. run a love seat through that packer. A couch. A I couch, mean that was yeah. that was a popular one. You picked up a whole couch and it ate it up. <clears throat> and um and you would not like looking at it, you wouldn't perceive that. Like you'd look at the number and be like, well, one's got a bigger hopper, like the new way. Mm-hmm. So clearly it must take large objects easier and again i'll apologize to engineers who design it who are probably saying right right no we should preface like i mean these are these trucks are designed to tip a car yeah with bag trash yeah. to yeah. fall into a hopper and set it down right unfortunately that's not the reality of all the routes no so and and there's still a lot of areas or markets out there that are not side load that could or should be because there's a lot like you who probably thought side load will never work but then once you kind of learn how to use a side load outside of what it was designed to do, you're like, oh, actually, this is very applicable. Well, in the rear load, you know, customers are just trained that, you know, you can always kind of set out bulk items with yeah. a rear load truck because yeah. it can always take them. Man, when I'm setting up a route, I know which one you'd take. I would take a Bridgeport setting up a route just because yeah. I know how bulky the items are going to be. And you got to get those things cycled through the hopper. And I, when I plug the new way, it's bad. I'm up on top. I'm... I mean, there, you got to do a lot to unplug you know, the pack. And this is another, hopper. yeah, this is another moment where we'll have to like cut away to actual um, in the shop camera angle. So, like, we're getting new, uh, new information. What do you think the gap is between the pack blade and the hopper opening bridge port versus new way? The depth? Yeah. Like, because I've noticed um, when the new way is fully extended, there's still like probably three or four inches between the pack blade and the opening. Like it's not a uh, well. There's 
there's a couple. Okay, so we're doing a little interruption to the regular video. I think after all this time of speculating, I might have the answer. We'll, uh, I'm in the hopper of the new way. We'll switch the angle. All right, so I got the new way's blade all the way extended. It kind of looks like it's off, but it, it's lined up. And we're about seven inches. Six. Okay, so I grabbed some shots measuring uh, how far that blade goes in and then how much of this rail is left over here. And I thought, well, maybe I didn't extend it all the way. And because there's, you know, this rail here, I was like, well, maybe I didn't extend it all the way. So I turned the truck back on, I'm sure I maxed out the cylinder, and that's as far as it goes. So the penetration is, you know, right to the breech and nothing else. In the other truck, we'll see how much further the bridge port goes and since it goes further, I think that's why when you get something bulky like a TV box, uh, furniture box, or something large, uh, the styrofoam packing, that goes further into the body, which creates a cutting, crushing pattern. Whereas this one, it pushes it a little bit just past here and then comes back. And that makes the spring, uh, spring effect of the garbage to come back into the hopper. A quick detail as I switch between the two trucks. The new way over here has this lockout mechanism right here. See how clean it is? It's because it folds up on the exterior and folds up here, high up on the, uh, the tailgate. So hinges to the back. Here, I'll stand over here so you got a sense. That will hinge up this way. Bridge port over here. We had to get out the, um, uh, some lubricant and some hammers to make stuff loose enough because this piece of steel slides underneath and gets stowed this way where all the road salt and mud goes. So as this tire is spinning, it's spinning it up into your lockout. So when you want to use the lockout, it gets rusted in there. So, see how dirty and rusty? It's shiny now because it's sprayed with a bunch of lubricant. So you can tell how it's kind of rusted. Whereas this truck, the new way, folds up out of the way. One detail that I thought was kind of worth noting, so we're kind of crapping on the new way with these shots, but I want to give them some props for that one. I can. All right, well, let's give it a shot. That can maybe fit. Maybe. Wait. Oh, garbage juice. Okay. All right, so now we're inside the bridge port. You can kind of see. Shit. I'm going to have to jump up there. Uh, I got to get up there to get this shot. Now is the time where if you haven't liked the video, this is the time to do so. Uh to appreciate what I'm doing to get some of these shots here. So we're inside the bridge port. Boom, look at that. Look how much difference there is. I guess that makes it pretty obvious how much more that blade pushes in. And uh, so when you get bulky cardboard, it doesn't stop here and then spring back into the hopper. That blade pushes it all the way in and uh, what I think happens is when it's hitting that garbage, it gives it a place to sever it back here because, you know, the pinch points all the way back here. It's getting pushed in. That starts to crumble that cardboard and give it a cut. Okay, so I'm standing in the bridge port and I can tell you right now, now the blade's extended, uh, but it feels more claustrophobic. Now, if the blade's retracted, I'm 6'4", and it, this is actually a pretty tall wall. So the arm, if it goes high enough, it can build the trash up vertically. And since that blade is pushing further and further back into the body, it can kind of eat up the garbage. So both of them uh, pack well as far as compressing the trash. But when a bulky item like large cardboard boxes get in the hopper, the bridge port is handling it better because I believe it's that penetration of the blade severing it or cutting it with the hopper wall here. So as it goes through the breach, it starts to cut it. Whereas the, the new way, since it doesn't go 
further into the body, it's having issue getting that trash to go. Now, if, if these are all used as intended, where everyone's setting out garbage that is tied and bagged, then that's not really an issue. The fact is, we're smaller operations where we don't have the luxury of having rear load trucks running uh, as well as the side load. You know, we don't have additional rear load trucks to run in tandem with the side load trucks. Our rear load is actually running a route, so we can't just call in these bulky stops and have someone else come by. Now, I prefer the efficiency of being able to take it all with the side load so you don't have another truck adding time uh, and labor to get the routes finished. A couple things about the new way that I see. One is they've got this rail system that is up yeah. on the top. Yeah. So it creates like this lip, and that's a perfect place for something light like cardboard to get hung up on. Yeah. And then it won't fall through. Whereas like the bridge port, it's pretty up and down. Yeah. You know, there's nothing for it to really catch on. Yeah. So it just falls through easier. We might have to just like go out with a camera and go into the hopper with the pack blade extended. Because there's times where uh, I'll get a door tossed up into a packer and the bridge port will eat it up. Yep. But if you're 400 stops into a route with the new way and you throw a door in there. 15 you, minutes. Yeah. Because what will happen is it'll wedge in such a way where the door will be packed into the hop or packed into the body with the top half. If it twists or turns and goes flat, that's where you have a problem. You want that thing to get crunched and ate up by that packer because if it's flat, and it's wedged into the trash, and then it's also like in that gap where the packer doesn't meet the body perfectly, that's going to bridge across. Yeah, it just makes a bridge, and then yep. all the garbage falls on top. So the garbage sits on top of the door, and then there's a void underneath where the packer just cycles through this void. So the thing that kills me, and they just keep getting bigger, are TV boxes. Like oh, 65, yeah. I don't know how many 75-inch yeah. TV boxes oh. I've thrown away. Yeah. And whenever I pull up with a new way, I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. I pull up with a bridge port, and it's like, oh, just throw that in, and it'll be gone in yeah. two cycles. I have to drop a TV box in um, so that when, like, you don't want it to you don't want it to fall flat into the hopper because that's where you'll have issues. you got to set it in a way, and I'll just have to do a video of this, but you got to set it in a way so the packer actually, like, crushes it once or like starts to cut it as it packs it and then you can maybe like use a pack assist well so another reason too i would i would um lean towards a bridge port if i was setting up routes is you have carts that are in incorrectly placed yep. you have a lot of backwards carts yeah so when you have the depth in that hopper you can tip quite a few cans backwards where the yeah. lid folds open yeah and they dump they dump fine See, your truck when I when I fill the hopper and it's kind of you know trying to cycle through and it's backwards, or all that garbage is on the or, lid. Or you could try to just get good. <laughs> I'm not turning the cans. That takes way too long. See, I but for me it's easy. I can roll up with the arm extended, get the finger between the can and the lid, and as it closes it, and this will be a cutaway. As it closes it, I can turn it at a minimum like 90 degrees. And if you get it 90, the lid's not in the way. The lid's not in the way, and it's not an issue. But I that hasn't been much of an issue for me, and I would almost go. well. It's not an issue because we got so many people setting their carts out correctly. Yeah, I'm saying the first setting week when it up. you go out, if you're going to turn every cart that's backwards, you're going to be out till yeah dark. Well, I, I'm torn apart on this because like you're talking about a scenario where you're setting up routes that are not not ever been automated, and what's tricky is like if you're running a garbage company that's never been automated. And maybe you're like a lot of guys that start garbage companies where you think, oh, I can drive a truck and I can turn a wrench so I can keep this truck running and stuff. So maybe a bridge port is the way to go because you'll anyone that's got a mechanical background will look at the, the, the structure or the mechanics of the hydraulic arm for a ranger or the bridge port ranger and think this is very simple. This is like I understand how everything's working here, whether they've looked at trucks or implements for farm equipment. You know, it's all generally the same, how electrical – uh, hardware and then hydraulics work. So the bridge port or the uh, yeah bridge port's very straightforward, and maybe that's the truck they want to start with. But if you are, um, maybe you're not mechanically inclined, but you have a really good service uh, dealer nearby, 
that new way, if you've never driven automated, that new way is very forgiving for a new user. And I think that accuracy, when people are sending out their extra bags and boxes, that accuracy of the arm is going to let you grab anything. Like whether you're hugging it or pinching it, you're going to grab a lot of stuff. I've grabbed vacuum cleaners with this arm because of that grip override. And we haven't even talked about the grip override function. Yeah, vacuum cleaner is like the most difficult thing to grab and get in the hopper. Yeah. Like if you can grab vacuum cleaners, you've been side loading for a while. Yeah, and I've done that. So, and the, like, in order for you to grab an extra outside the cart, and again, I apologize, engineers who say that's not what it's for, I don't care. It's how we use it. <laughs> and it's how a lot of other people use it. Come to Columbus it. and pick up garbage. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I always put that caveat out there. So if you're grabbing extras with a bridge port, you have to trick it into thinking that it can release. Because when the arm goes up, you can't open the grips. You have to, like, tap it. And yep. Yeah. Well, the, that's what that's another thing about the bridge port. They put, like, this mechanism in there for so that way you don't drop carts in the hopper. So, like, you got to close yeah. your grips before it'll go up, and then you got to open your grips to get it to go down. I, I don't want that feature on the truck. Yeah. Like, I get if somebody's learning the truck, that's I think a good you, feature to have. You said you have to go down to open your grips. Yep, I, you, you got to go down you, to yeah. open. Because I then, think you said you have to open the grips to go down. No, you before you can open your grips, the arm has to be, have heard or received the signal that you went down. Yep. And that's why pitching extras is so difficult because you go all the way up there, you stop, and then you got to go the other direction to let go. Yeah. Whereas your truck, you hold down the grip override yeah. button, and then before you're even all the way to the top with all that momentum, yeah. you're releasing, and then it just flings in whatever you got. And I always forget the term because out of the factory, I think it's called like a momentary switch where you actually have to be holding the switch physically because um, it's not a rocker that is in a static position. You have to hold the switch and then hit the uh, grip release button on the joystick. So you're kind of contorting yourself. So what I did is I went on Amazon and ordered an, an actual static rocker switch to go from one to the other and stay there. And the downside is if you hit the grip override and you lock it into position and you forget that it's there, then the next cart you grab, I haven't dropped a cart for this reason, but the cart does swing a little loose in your grips. Well, they, they have, once you get so far up with the arm, it mm -hmm. auto squeezes so that yeah. way you don't drop carts. And That's, then that function no longer works when you override it. Exactly. Which but, to me is fine. Like, yeah. I completely understand I got to, you know, double tap the grips at the top yeah. to hold it. But what happens is when I'm grabbing, um, like, there's one example where it was a box full of trash and a broken mirror. And as I, I had the grip override on but I was able to look out my window because I wasn't having to reach over to grab that switch. Um, you can release as you're going up, and it almost like flings it. Yep. Whereas you can't do that with a bridge port. You have to go all the way up and then kind of tap going down, and then you can release, and you lose your momentum. And we kind of like figured a way around the new way. I wish we could figure a way around the bridge port to get it so we did have a yeah. feature of like being able to release before yeah. we're all the way up. Which it's an it's a and they, the factory yeah. probably would say we're not going to let you do that. Yeah, I mean seriously, yeah. come pick up garbage in Columbus, <laughs> right? <laughs> but again, like we, if we get to a point and we're gonna, the plan is to go visit New Way, the factory, and one of the things we want to advocate is like, listen, there's, I imagine a lot of the markets are all carved up for like, oh that company they buy bridge ports that company buys new ways or labris or hiles or you know any a number that are out there it's like those are all claims and maybe you can get them to buy something different and it's a harder sell but there's also markets out there that are still strictly rear load and if you want to usher them into side load like here are some selling points and maybe you got to change how they come out of the factory a little bit. Well, just making them as user friendly as they can be, so that way you know yeah. the conversion process is easy. Yeah, because and, and the thing is, is like the new way when it when I first saw it, I remember being a little more intimidated because it just seemed like there was way more wiring and hydraulic hoses wrapped. So up. scared of that thing. Yeah, computer was running uh, it. All yeah, the proxy yeah. Swans, sensors. Yep. And I and what would be really interesting because most of my background is like I've built my own computers, my own PCs. So I kind of have a sense of like how to go into bio settings or mess with stuff. I would almost be inclined to be like, hey, can you give us some sort of flexibility to go into that computer 
and like change some settings on like or like make it more customizable because what would be great is if you could go into that computer and be like well this user likes these features and so well i if you had like a beginner setting yeah no different than a video oh, game yeah like, you know video games yeah. in the beginning you kind of like a beginner things are slow right and once you figure it out it's like okay you want high sensitivity in your controls yeah because the one thing they like we talked to um tim down at uh auto car and he was saying they had some feature where they can change out hoses and make them run faster well i think they're rolling that out and yeah. we'll learn more at the end of the month but they definitely know their arm is like perceived as like a little slower. bit slower so i think they have a newer option that they're rolling out to like speed yeah. it up a little bit it would be really interesting is be like much like when you get in a car and it's like oh who's driving this car you know person one two three or four and it'll change the seats and yeah. settings <laughs> where it's just like oh this like this person's using the truck oh we'll change it to like the 10 the year vet you know we'll give them speed and all that um, whereas it's like, Hey, we got a new guy, a trainer. It's like, well, we won't let him open the grips, you know, above the hopper and we'll slow it down a little bit. Right. And when you need that speed and you need that customized custom customization, we'll let you have it. But, um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, but then again, the new way I feel like just has with all those hydraulic hoses and stuff like that, it really it's intimidating. It really wasn't that bad. And there was one instance where. Um, we had a wire get pinched against the body because it was too, like a cart was too close to the pole and it was like some bracket that pinched it. And on the phone with the guy from New Way, it, it really wasn't that bad to like. No, push. and I will say that about Bridgeport and I will say that about New Way. Yeah. You can call either of those two companies up. You're going to get very friendly people that will yeah. help you out and get you the parts you need. And that's which huge. Which has been great. That's huge. Like if you have a good service department to hold someone's hand, uh, and give them that comfort that makes it makes it way more sellable so back to the so i got two more things about the arms okay one is the bridge port is gravity down which means when you go down there's no hydraulic pressure pushing it down it oh. just falls with gravity right which means the lid stays closed right and i love the lid closed because Ew. then the cart is balanced to oh, me, when sure. you so then the opposite to that is the new way is hydraulic down. Yeah. So you can just full speed down right away. Yeah. And even if you kind of go slow, no matter what, you kind of fling the lid open. Yeah. Then your cart's off balance. So then setting the cart down becomes difficult. And yeah. then, and another thing is, the bridge port has the arm where if you go up or down and adjust to grab the cart, yep. your grips stay level with the ground. Yep. Whereas your truck, the new way. It, the minute you go up or down, you start changing the pitch of the grips. Yep. So setting carts down to me with your truck is difficult, and that's time-consuming. Yeah, and and I, I've learned, like, I can slow down enough, like, we have a customer request the lid be closed, and I've made a reel asking, do you want lids open or closed? Just casually what people's opinions are, and it's very variable. Some want to know it's been serviced. Lid open means it's been serviced. And then some people are like adamant, where it's like it has to be closed. Yep, because you yeah. get a little bit of rain, a little moisture, any yeah. any reason yeah. for them to call. So um, customers call less when you leave the lids closed. I will say that. Oh, really? Yes. What do they call when the lids open? Just well, they like, like go out there and they inspect it if something's stuck in there. Oh. Like you leave, if the lids close, like Interesting. they just pull it up to the house. Yeah, and I've adapted like with the smaller sixty fives. If you leave those lids open. That that's a problem. And then you get on the slope. Get on the slope of a driveway. Yeah, those sixty fives won't stay standing. Whereas that bridge port, I can set those things down because yeah. I leave, keep that lid closed. That arm yeah. stays level to the ground. You just push it against the ground a little I've, bit, let go. I started to adapt where if I'm grabbing a sixty five, I just leave the lid shut every time. I have to slow the arm down a little bit mm -hmm. to get the low lid to stay closed. But in order for it to stay standing when I leave, yeah, the lid's closed. But like a heavier ninety five, if the lid's open, there I can I don't really have much issue of keeping keeping them standing. Um, I do notice every once in a while something will hang on the wheel, or like where you'll open a grip and it might fling it. And I'm not quite sure, you know. Yeah, if you just put if the, the grip down too far. And yeah, something. On a wheel. Yeah. But no, that's I did forget about that. Uh, it's just funny how many little things 
the little things there are between a couple different designs, right? Oh, you think, oh, the concept they're both, you know, yeah. grabbing a cart, emptying it in a hopper, simple. Yeah, and then you run them for a thousand stops a day, and it's like, well, this is yeah, a little bit different. Yeah, a lot of it is, a lot of it is user preference. I like the one scenario where a Bridgeport would thrive would be a contract town or a trailer park where you have like full compliance. So let's say and you just have one after another. Yep. And I've done trailer parks uh, at a different company with that was a Bridgeport, and you can smash through 300 carts real fast because it's just and they said and the rule was if anything falls out of the cart or falls off the top, driver doesn't get out. Yep. It's like dude, you can just crush. But at the same time, I made a video of the new way, showing like, well, how fast is it, how fast can a garbage truck be? And we did. I did a string of duplexes, and for like ten minutes, I had a pace of like two hundred cans an hour. Right. So you could do a lot. You can do a lot with the new way. Well, and that's just that goes back to you know I'm talking about all these little differences. A lot of these are overcome with time spent with the machine. Yeah. And you just figure out workarounds around. Yeah. Okay, you know when you set this down, it's a little more difficult. This or that. Yeah. I I would say you could probably outpace your pack blade in a new way. Because of that shallower hopper, even though they say it has more cubic yards to the hopper, because it's shallower, um, you can overfill it faster. Mm -hmm. And you know, and you can put that blade on a two or three cycle. But if that blade still is taking, if you would take a new way through. Let's say so, like trailer parks typically have like high density. The yeah. carts are full of garbage, and they're very yeah. close together. Yeah. So like you would test your hopper ability to cycle. Yeah. It, I bet you'd be surprised how much faster a bridge port could go through yeah. than a new way, just I, because of your packer limitation. Yeah, and I, I don't think I'd be surprised, and I would I would bet my money on you know the bridge port finishing a trailer park faster or like a small con uh, a sm a, like a contract town where the lot sizes are small yeah you get real close duplexes yeah yeah that's where the bridgeport would outpace but i don't know i i still over time i still lean towards that new way i just love the flexibility and accuracy of that that arm and the variable control like even though even though I'm an experienced veteran where I don't need to necessarily have variable control, it's just it's quieter and smoother. And well, I, I you know you go you go to what would you set up contract town with, and you say that variable control joystick. Mm. I think guys, you know, if you operate bobcats, if you operate farm equipment, everything has variable control in the joystick. I, I would yeah. think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I think yeah. people are more acclimated to that style of, yeah. a, of a joystick. Yeah. And it's more comfortable. Um, I mean, not just because of the cab, but like just that smoothness. It is more yeah. pleasant. You know, you're not doing this rocking too much. Uh, we've covered quite a bit. Do you want to go? Oh, you written down traps. Do you want to move on to that? Yeah, I'll let you take traps oh, since you got uh, the bad ones. So... Some of our most viral stuff was from me cleaning out the traps on the new way. In the new way, well, we'll start off with the bridge port. The bridge port, the pack blade, and traps are kind of all flat and in lined. So when you got a lot of water, if you tip the body up on the bridge port, at the, like not even a lot, just tip it up like two or three inches off the frame, that slope will drain all the water back to the body, and all you got to do is scrape out the, the solid matter which is very clean, whereas the new way has that sump or that pit where the water will sit with all the debris. And you do that, you know, for 500 stops, you open up the traps, and you hit, if there's any amount of moisture, not even just from raining, but just in the garbage itself. Uh, like we have a stop, the guy throws out, like, soup every so often. It's so gross. A massive amounts of soup. And not in cans either. It's, like, just soup. And that, when you open it up, it'll just come gushing out, and it's it's gross, and you can't get away from it fast enough. Um, it's they, a it's a bad design, and the operator's getting dirty no matter what yeah, you do. Yeah, and and even the engineers, I think one of them reached out through Instagram and said, "Yeah, we're aware, and we're trying to come." I don't know it. what they would do different though, because I mean, you understand like what they're doing yeah. by creating that lower trough. I I don't know, like you know how you got that that. Um, uh, flip down yeah thing the gutter whatever it is 
Um, downspout. The, the spout. Whatever. The track. Whatever. The chute. You got that chute that you flip down. I don't know if it would be easier to make it so um, you have it angled to the back. Like when it flips down, it has like a – it instead of shooting straight out from the side of the truck, maybe it adds just a little bit of a slope to point it backwards. So the operator could be up towards the cab, open up the trap door, and let the water drain out and shoot to the back. That might ease it, but then you're adding time because you don't open the door all the way. You crack it to let it drain slowly. And then, but now well, they almost need a way for you to prep it, right? So you'd prep mm-hmm. it by putting, folding those down, mm-hmm. and then somehow have it so that way you can open the traps and not be by them. Yeah, like well, almost like a, sure. a quick release or something. Yeah, but then you're still at the problem of you got to pull the um, the cleaning tool through it, which. Yeah, the cleaning tools problem I solved by just keeping grocery sacks in the cab. Uh, still, though, when you pull that, you're. That slosh is coming You're at you. It to you. Um, yeah, well, what I ended up doing was I would use a stick and push from one side. Uh, the non-handle side, I would push from there to push the handle out. And then I'd pick up the handle with that grocery sack. And that has helped. I can generally get it done. Um, but I don't know what I, – I don't know if there's an ideal solution. Like – you I'll just all I'll say is the worst part of the day when you're running the, the side new wi- the new way sidewinder is when you got to clean the traps. It is the worst. Yeah, and there's been a couple dry days where I was pleasantly surprised, but otherwise there's oh. always some something. I don't know what I don't know what the like, because like, like I said, there's there's different ways to do it. You could crack the door a little bit and drain it slowly, but now you're adding time. But maybe the engineering solution is make it so you can open those traps from the cab. And, like, that first initial gush of water is done while you're in the cab. But now you're adding cost, you know, or parts that can fail. So, I don't like, the way I've been doing it is push from one side so the main gush is on the other side yep. from where you're at. And then go around with the uh, plastic sack and pick up the handle. And so far, I've been okay as far as, like, having the – or – I mean, if you're real lucky, the person that's dumped next to you has cardboard, and you just grab a sheet of cardboard and stand with that as your guard. But, yeah, it's not fun. I, w- I mean, for starters, I would mount that scraper tool outside the cab or outside the, the sump, much like the bridge port. Yeah. The bridge port has a cubby where it's in its garden hoe. So what's nice with the bridge port is let's say you lose or break your scraper, you can go to a bomb guards or tractor supply and just buy another hoe. If you mess up your scraper for the new way, it's yeah, that's kind of a custom it's, tool. It's a factory, you know, custom tool. Or you'll never replace it. You'll just start buying garden hoes from that going forward. So I, I, so I got a couple just like overall like okay. uh, like suggestions. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll start with new way. Yeah. So the hopper cover. Yeah. That thing needs to speed up. Yes, Th- this like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this hopper cover. So when it's windy out, you need to use your hopper cover to like kind of yeah. close off the the packer, let the packer cycle stuff through so it doesn't blow out. And they, the computers there, they could do it, but I, yeah. I don't think they've ever ran the truck and actually used it. Especially compared to its bridge port. The bridge port's great. It goes down, and then when you grab a cart and mm-hmm. lift a cart on the bridge port, it automatically pulls yeah. up while you're lifting it before you even get to yeah. the top. Yeah, like that speed balance is perfect because that lid will fly open as fast as the arm goes up. But now, so now that being said, the um, the new way you can shut down the pack the packer, yep. and still run the arm. Yep. Whereas the bridge port, it's all or nothing. Yep. Like you, if the arm's running and you have hydraulics there, your packer's running, and it's so nice on the on the new way on a windy day. You get that to push into the body, your pack blade, and you just shut that off. Yep. And then you go empty your next can, and then you turn it back on. Yeah. Whereas the new w- or the bridge port is just constantly cycling back and forth. Right. If they could separate those two, even just give us a switch so we can turn off the yeah. the uh, pack blade, but still let us have our arm motion. Yeah. And that's and we're unique in that we have to transist between neighborhoods. Yep. Our routes are designed where it's like run this neighborhood and hop a couple blocks over, run another neighborhood. And you don't have every house too. You know, if you had every yeah. house, you're moving yeah. slower, but yeah. if you're not in a contract town. Yeah. Cause there's that, those, I got uh, a string of neighborhoods right off of a, a, 
a blacktop or major arterial that brings people into town. So it's kind of like a, it's not, it's not rural neighborhoods, they're streets, but there's those last four or five stops that go up the hill towards like the college um, or to the lakes. And those four or five stops as you go up the hill. So now you're wide open. That stuff blows. Yep. Like literally it, like the wind blows and it's all over the place. And there's nothing you can do. You put that arm up. And again, yeah. an engineer would say, well, garbage is meant to be bagged, bagged. tied yeah. in the uh, cart. And it's like. <laughs> welcome to Never Never Land. <laughs> yeah. What's it like over there? Yeah. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so then. But so like the Bridgeport back to that, it's either on or off. And then they've got it set up on this timer for 30 seconds. Yeah. So when you close your grips, that thing packs for 30 seconds. Yep. Give us a variable switch. Yeah. Like, if I'm running a recycle route, I need that thing for, like, maybe 10, 15 seconds, and yeah. then that thing can turn off. Yeah. And and maybe that's probably because New Way has that computer. Yeah, like, New Way has it where you can choose, do you want one, two, or three packs per tip of a cart? Yep. And at the beginning of the route, when you're empty, you only want one, and then as you yeah. fill up and you start to pack out. Or you can turn the auto pack entirely off. Turn it on more. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah. It's one. That's a pretty important difference. Um, I don't have much else to add. I might have forgotten stuff, but I mean that alone. There's 45 minutes. Yeah. Well, those are both awesome trucks. I will say. Yeah. I I wouldn't one have nice a problem thing, either. One nice yeah. thing about waiting 2020 until 2022 to yeah. go to side loading is. Yeah. The equipment's been developed for like 20 years. Right. Um, because there's I forget what it was. Maybe it was a McNeilius. But there's something where it's air over hydraulics, and that drove me drove me nuts. Yeah. Because, like, I don't know if the air pressure would change in the truck, and that would affect it. But there would be one moment where it's like, oh, this is kind of slow. And another moment where if you're a little too eager on the joystick, it would literally punch a cart up the driveway. Just go, ba -bam! My God. And then they it would be like a weird folding arm. So it would unfold out and then fold in. And that would... That would beat the piss out of carts. Yeah. Like, they had a full-time – the place I was at, they had a full-time toter guy, and he was taking, like, 20 beat-up carts out every day. Granted, they were a larger company, but 20 carts a day because these things are bashing them. It's expensive. Yeah, and maybe they could have had a McNeilius expert there saying, oh, do this, this, or that. But the mechanics and drivers we had, I mean, they thought, well, this is as good as it's going to get. I'm like, I don't know. This does not seem – sustainable <laughs> yeah but, so i will say both of our bodies are pretty awesome yeah i feel comfortable with either one of them like because the the new way was down for what was it oh it had a flat tire mm -hmm. you know so it wasn't related to the body but i couldn't get started and you said well you know go ahead and start with the kenworth or the bridgeport and i remember the first 10 15 stops i was like oh no <laughs> It's going to be a long day. And then eventually, well, I, I, what amazed me was by the end of the day, I was like, dude, I think I just caught up. Like, I started way behind because, like, oh, you know, messing with tires, calling, blah, blah, blah. You start behind. But at the end of the day, I caught up, even with the smaller body. It's just because I was like, that arm speed is. A couple seconds every can. Every can. You, get, you, might, you might get one or two seconds back every can. And, you know, 500 cans later, yeah. So, but I. I still, I was still eager to get back to that new way. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that was our uh, quick discussion. Sort of supposed to be a quick discussion. Got a little longer, but that's our uh, our feedback on the Bridgeport versus New Way. Again, saying versus is probably not the best term because either one of us. And if anybody uses you, either of these trucks, we would love to hear your uh, yeah. Your take oh on yeah. Them as well. Yeah. Uh, post comments or. Uh, if you're in Trashman United on Facebook, you can even post a video response and tag us um, or tag Thorin, me, because A Sanitation, the page, is not in those groups. But I don't know. It's social media. You guys figure it out. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks for watching, ideally watching, and, uh, yeah, follow us.